Welcome to the Jupiter at night. We're presented live on the internet. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Jupiter at Night. My name is Chris. My name is Jeremy. Well, hey there, J-Man. Well, hey there, Chris. Hey, I'm excited. It's a very spacey episode. It's another Space Wednesday episode for mm-hmm. us. Yeah, we're bringing in it's Mars space. now. Hey there, Heather. How's it going? Hey, guys. Pretty good. How about you? Good, good. So uh, before we get going, I wanted to share with you uh, some of the feedback we've gotten. People love, are absolutely loving the Space Wednesdays. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had... Uh, an, uh, I cannot remember his name. It's like Nalem or something. I remember if it's somebody in the Nephilim, chat room. I think. Maybe? I can't, I'm getting the pronunciation wrong, but he's in the chat room and he sent us this awesome artwork that he made oh, of the yeah. three of us. It's us oh, on Mars. How great is oh it? Oh my it's gosh. Got, it's got Mars base on there. It's got the J Man on yep. there, happy as can be. And then it's got yeah, me I'm, on there. I'm on Mars. Why am I happy? I know. I look at me. I'm like. I work and I did a spit take in my office. <laughs> did you? Yes. Although I have to wonder, are you doing an ultrasound on that rock in the foreground what i don't I know do spectrographic analysis yeah okay, well, let's, let's go with that yes. <laughs> yeah i think so i think so otherwise it, well actually jeremy you probably shouldn't be so racist for all you know that could be a horda you're right um <laughs> oh. it's life but not as we know it yeah now uh, <laughs> one of the episodes we did recently we covered the uh, space shuttles and how the fact that that whole program is kind of winding down yeah before yeah. we go on with tonight's topic i wanted to cover uh, just a, a couple pieces of feedback that we received from that first of all uh mm-hmm. we got a couple really vocal members of our community that were upset that we didn't mention private space flight at all or the oh, the fact yeah. that now government agencies are helping fund some of these yeah. as well to help yes. pick up the slack from our space shuttle programs ending um so mars i talked to you a little bit about the show we're going to be doing mm-hmm. a whole show on that in the future right a whole episode oh yeah yeah there we go so we'll cover that in detail so and stay tuned for that nephirum N-E-P-H-E-R-U-M was the guy that made yeah. that photo. Now, the other thing I just wanted to touch on really quick was there was a couple people in our community that seemed to think that we were implying that the whole space program is done. Oh, uh, no. Silly. Because of the way that we presented it as like the end of an era and all this stuff. Well, yeah. Th- no, it's not. And you know not what? Quite. We're going to prove it. Because yeah. tonight's all about the continuation of all that. Yeah, now we're, yeah. Uh, we're, we've done a whole series on Mars, and I think it's probably the last episode where we're actually... Focusing on the planet Mars, yeah. and uh, we thought, let's take a look at what's actually happening over there right now. We've got these rovers. We're going to have more soon. Mm-hmm. Yep. These are things that either have happened, are happening, or will happen on Mars, and what a great way to wrap up this whole look we've done at Mars recently. So oh, yeah. why don't we start, uh, Heather, where, hey, where do you think is the best part, spot to take a look at this? Can we kind of start with some maybe some interesting tidbits about the rovers themselves? Sure. Well, I mean, we're not... You know the you know the human space flight may be winding down, but we're still doing robotic explorations. You know we have the rovers on there. You know, spirit and opportunity. Because yeah. really, we got to keep those robots busy so they don't go to get into their yeah. uprising too quick. Idle robot hands, Jeremy, leads to trouble. Right. And I know what you're saying. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so send them off planet is even better. There yeah. you go. Let them take over Mars. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> we could have an entrenched army by the time we arrive there. <laughs> All right, Mars base. Well, what are you getting us into here with these rovers? Well, you know, everyone, uh, you know, a lot of people have heard about, you know, Sojourner or Spirit or Opportunity. And, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the one of them is still going, but we have Curiosity Rover, which is going to be launching in November of this year. It'll oh, land on Mars in August of 2012. It's a big boy, too. Yeah. This one is about the size of a Mini Cooper. It's That's nine a car, feet, right? meters long. It's one of those crazy Britland 2, cars. pounds, about 9,000 kilograms. Look at 76 sh- pounds of just scientific instruments. Look at the wheels this thing has on it. I mean, this thing is just something else. Well, come on, man. I mean, the biggest problem they've had with rovers in the past is they get stuck in the mud. That's true. Dust. Sorry. Yeah, it's it's a sandy dust mixture that's really bad. Although they should have given it spinning rims, I'm just saying. Spinning Spinning rims. rims. (laughs) You're going to spend the money. (laughs) Right. Bling it up. Go for the spinners. (laughs) (laughs) Jeez. All right, so what else is interesting? Any kind of new equipment on this much larger version of a Mars rover? Yeah, well, it's... uh, We'll kind of come down from landing. You know, we've seen, you know, people may have seen the other landers, you know, they, you know, the animations where it, you know, has little balloons that yes. pop up around it and it bounces to a rolling ground. This one does not. This one's a little different. It comes in and it has. Well, I got to say, before you tell us how, I got I to gotta say that I was always unimpressed with the landings of the previous because it looked like you were asking for those suckers to break. You launch them at another planet, and they're just surrounded by styrofoam. Yeah, yeah. And they bounce around yeah. for a day or two. Yeah, you don't know what's down there. Styrofoam. Right. It's big Whatever. airbags. No, this one, though, they they stepped it up. 
Yeah, this one they're doing it differently because it's size, because it's so big, because it's a Mini Cooper. It's got rockets! The bouncy house isn't going to quite do it. Exactly, it has rockets. a rocket. It has a little jet pack. Yes! It That's not little. Down. No, it's big. I, I mean, that jet pack could lift I mean, a Mini Cooper. Yeah, it could lift a Mini Cooper. And it, so it jet packs it down to, so, till it gets so far off the ground. Then it lowers it down on a little rope. The rover settles down on the ground. You know, it sends a little signal. I'm on the ground and I'm happy. And then <laughs> it can disconnect and what if it's not fly happy? away. No, I won't dwell so on that. So what do they do with the jet pack? It just goes away? It will fly away to a safe distance and then just kind of land on the ground. You don't what want a waste it right of a in good the. Jet pack. I know, you don't dude. want it right in the the rover's business. You want it right. to have a little bit of clearance. Right. You right. know, so if there's a slight, you know, if there's anything at the last few seconds of it landing, you know, maybe it. You know. You know. I'll try not to make too many Terminator references tonight. I really will try, but that does look like a hunter killer. Yeah, it, really it, does. it does look like this is like, oh, look at this awesome scientific discovery we have. Also, oh, by the way, it has insane uh, military applications that would be very, very scary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does kind of seem like that. Combine that jetpack with one of those big dog robots we've seen on the internet. Hey, man. Go hey, man. Wall. At least this sucker doesn't have lasers, right? Because if this, if this thing had lasers. Well. What? The scientific toolkit, one of the tools is... A laser. Mars, no! It has a laser. It can zap a pinhead-sized area on uh, up to 23 feet away, and then it can do a spectral analysis of the flash of light, so it can determine what kind of elements are there. But yes, okay, it so has it's a laser. It's exposing. It's, ex it's exposing it's elements to light. It's not necessarily like drilling through rock. Well, it's it's vaporizing a small amount of oh, the of a so, rock or okay. a dust or whatever, so they can so go out. So it's just a vaporizing laser. On a 2,000-pound yes. robot that they, can fly. That can shoot through yes. rock. I'm so glad this thing is on Mars. <laughs> <laughs> this is really awesome. So they're going to be able to get some deep core samples from these rocks, basically, right? Well, it's not going to go very deep. But, I mean, there's a drill, so you can, you know, drill It's more than just the scratching the surface. Well, yeah, it's more than just scratching the surface. You want to be able to drill down a little bit. Because, I mean, the surface will have, you know, weathering. It may not have, you know, rain, but it has a little bit of, you know, air weathering. I so you, you want to get under the, under the surface. Right. Um, yeah. It has a alpha particle x-ray spectrometer. You know, so you can put a little bit of the dust in a slide and it can send out helium I think nuclei. that's what some of the videos that we're watching right now are. Yeah. Yeah, I saw some of the video. Proceed it looks on like a that. gigantic, awesome viewfinder, though. Can I just say I love NASA videos? <laughs> I do, too. And all this yeah. stuff. And the fact that it's public domain is just, like, extra bonus. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yep. Uh, all right, so uh, so this thing's going down there, and it's this thing's ready for some business. We've got yeah. a more advanced approach at our landing now. We're not doing the bouncy yeah. ball thing. No. We're going with some freaking lasers, mm -hmm. which yep. is, means we're getting serious. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's got yeah, cameras, it's got the wheels, spectrometers, uh, radiation detectors, atmospheric sensors. They're looking for a lot of astrobiology, you know, seeing, you know. What was it you said earlier? I think I accidentally talked over you. How much scientific equipment on this poundage? It has 176 pounds, 80 kilograms. Of, of just, just scientific, scientific instruments. Mm. Wow. That, that's a lot. I would not want to carry that around. Yeah. Marcia, have, have they given any kind of estimates of how long they think this thing will survive? Like, I know, like, the Spirit rover, for example, lasted much longer than they originally intended, oh, right? Oh, well, yes. Yeah, its original was three months, and then they kept extending it and extending it, and now we're, like, right. five years down the road so for one they, of them. Have they made any of their projections I think this, for this one's guy? on a similar three to six months they're going to guess and then it'll probably extend however long they can get the yeah. instrument to go i mean uh, the j-man was making a joke about this thing's wheels and whatnot but you've got yeah. a shot here that compares uh their the size and yeah. you can different. see the wheels are actually on this new rover bigger than the one yeah. we sent back in the 90s like the whole rover itself and the rover itself is lifted up relatively much higher on the wheels as well yeah yeah so uh, if you're watching the video version, uh, Mars, if I have this right, the one on the far left is the most recent, one of the most recent uh, yeah, type models we said. Opportunity. The okay. one in the middle is Sojourner that was back in 94. And Sojourner is, is literally about the size of the wheel of the new one. Yeah. No wonder that well, sucker got stuck. Yeah, they each have independent drive. Each of the wheels have independent drive motors. The two front wheels, the two back wheels have individual steering motors. This, can make, this thing can make a 360 degree turn in place. Wow. The diameter is double the wheel diameter of the reels that we have now. That just means it can bring its laser to bear that much faster. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you are freaked out by this thing. You are worried about this thing. <laughs> if you look at the wheels, you'll see some little gaps 
in the wheel. Yeah. That's actually um, so that when they roll forward, it'll create a distinctive pattern in the dirt behind them. So they can use a camera, look back and say, we, you know, estimate that this much distance should pass. So if they start sliding in that kind of sand that caught spirit and opportunity, mm. they can stop immediately and go, whoa, 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 we're not going as far as we should be going. So they're able to look at the tracks. Yeah, they're able to judge and measure the, the differences between, between the treads and everything. That's awesome. Yeah, between those specific hole, hole markings. Okay, okay. This thing, and the large wheels and everything, it means they can roll over a rock 30 inches high. Yeah, and because it's not inflated, they don't have to worry about flat. It's like a either. Mars Humvee. Yeah. Huh. So it's like the best of both worlds because it's yeah. one part super wheel, but it's also one part tank tread in, in a sense. Yeah. It, like it doesn't have to worry about popping and things like that. So this, I want one of these just to drive around in. I know. Seems like yeah. I could just sit in this thing and be comfy. And look at that. <laughs> look at that suspension system too. That's, that's monstrous. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah, thing really could is. go over practically anything. They must be expecting to take this on some pretty significant terrain. Do they, do yeah. they have methods and means to to fully test that here on Earth before they send it? Yeah, they have what they call the Mars Yard, which is where they have, you know, rocks and soil of various nature that simulates on, on Earth. They even made a little section for that nasty sand that caught up one of our rovers. Oh. You know, so they have various uh, grades. So they'll have a 30-degree slope, a 60-degree slope, and they can run this thing over rocks and dirt and simulant and up slopes to is kind this of... Is that a combination of like artificial environments or do they go out and find like, um, you know, desert terrain or something to do this? On? Well, they have like a little, essentially they have like a little section of their, of the, of the backyard, you know, near that, where they're building it. And, you know, they created a section where they bring in the kind of, uh, simulant, uh, that can simulate the kind of consistency gotcha. um, that they'll see on Mars. That's why they were able to go and get sand and kind of, um, mix it up just right so that it recreated what they were seeing on Mars. And they're like, yeah. okay, this is the kind of nasty stuff we can see. This is the great stuff we can see. I, I love science. <laughs> that's just, I, that's like, duh, of course you want to do that. But yeah. then it's like, yeah. I probably wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is totally about thinking of stuff and doing stuff that you never would have thought of. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like they're putting the one that's going to Mars out there. They, have, they build two of these whenever they do these. One they build to go to Mars. And one they keep here and they test it. And they'll keep it here. So like when Spirit... Uh, opportunity whenever they got stuck they take the little earth uh earth cousin oh and they go try to out, figure out ways to get it out go stick you know get it stuck just go like crash it somewhere it. go crash it similar to how it was crashed on mars and then sit here and practice on earth that's, that's brilliant just, that's great. different ways before you send commands to do anything to mars that way you could say nope that's making things worse nope that's making things worse that doesn't do anything oh this might work it's worth trying that's much better than trial and error while you're on the planet. Yeah. 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 Uh, I like that it is 2011 because that means yes. that things like Ustream uh, and NASA actually streaming the build yeah. of this thing, yeah. it actually exists. Perfect. You can actually watch my NASA build this thing. I actually, uh, when I first learned about the stream, I sat around and watched it for like two hours. I had it up in a window <laughs> in the corner while I was Right? Wouldn't you totally just leave it up while you're working? and yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. And then you can look over and be like, boy, NASA's working pretty hard. I should get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> I'd better minimize that. <laughs> All right, Mars. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, what else do you got for us regarding this guy? Uh, well, this is this one is a little bit different. It's not solar panel. It uh, has a nuclear battery. So oh, it that can, is interesting. The positive thing is it can operate year round because the rovers we have now, they kind of have to shut down during the winter because it can't get enough sun. Yeah. You know, and the more dust that builds up on their solar panels, you kind of have to hope for one of the little dust devils to come along and clean it off yeah. so that you can get more power. So they this should, one should have put wiper blades on those suckers <laughs> so it can go farther away from the equator. It can operate year round, but it does mean that it will have a cutoff date. There will, it's going to, uh, you know, the battery is going to run down. It's going to come to a date where there's going to be a hard, they didn't even, they'll run they it didn't, as far as they can, but they didn't even put solar panels on as like a, a no, backup it supplement. Doesn't, it doesn't or anything look like, like that. It. No. I guess it's already pretty dang heavy. Maybe they they've got, them on they've it. got limited weight and limited space. Yeah. Yeah. And so wow, you kind of trade one for, it's a trade, you know, you can have a, a simpler thing that you can kind of hope that you can keep going along, you know, with the solar panel and, you know, be so able to only just part for of the, clarification for the J-Man here. Mm. I mean, I'm not worried myself. No. no but this not. is just for the J-Man. Yes. Uh, you're telling me mm -hmm. that this is a robot. Yep. With a jetpack mm -hmm. and a laser mm -hmm. that can the travel through travel. space and has a nuclear reactor built into it. Well, a nuclear battery. 
<laughs> okay. Oh, okay. That's better. Not a reactor, just a battery. <laughs> just a battery. It's okay. Just, All right. Okay. Good. That puts my mind at ease. It's just kind of ironic that this is the anniversary that Skynet would be going live. Yeah, tomorrow. Just, tomorrow, yeah. yeah. Well, it's yeah. Judgment Day, everybody. <laughs> yeah. We. <laughs> Uh, so, so why the choice? Is it just simply a matter of year-round operation? Because they had to look at that and go, okay, this does give it a finite date. Is it is it yeah. a long date? Well, well, yeah. And then depending on what kind of uh, nuclear substance you use, you can get a lot of power out of it. So you can run these lasers and X-ray spectrometers, oh, sure. and it gives you a lot more power to work with, which allows you to be have more sophisticated instruments. Mm. So you can have more instruments. You can have, you know, all these wheels have their own, you know, motor so you can give you a lot more right. access now you so can get something with a longer half life half life that will last a while mm -hmm. right um, and with those with those independent motors and, and going off this nuclear battery they're going to be able to put a lot more horsepower into those individual wheels which means also less chance of getting stuck i could easily yes. crush human bones i bet <laughs> <laughs> i don't have any scientific right data to back that up yeah. yeah yeah so they're really worried about getting stuck this time around aren't they well it's i mean one of the rovers did get stuck and that's how it, that's why it wasn't able to come back. You know, it was, they weren't able to roll up on a hill so they could catch all the light they could to make it through the winter. You know, so it's something that they really thought about. Mm -hmm. I love that the chat room is literally freaking out over this. Like, <laughs> like we're, the J-Man and I are just joking, but no, the chat room, they're actually having a little bit of a freak out session right now. <laughs> they're about like the laser's only a pinprick and somebody yeah. else is a, a death of a thousand needles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, Mars, I, I find all this stuff extremely fascinating. Are, yeah. Do you know now, and this, we don't have this in the doc, but uh, this is the U.S.'s plans, right? So is there, uh, is there plans from other countries to send other rovers and things like that, or are we kind of leading the pack on this? We're generally leading the pack. Uh, now, most on um, a lot of these things will have international partners. So maybe sure. one instrument okay. uh, was built by the European Space Agency, ESA, or mm -hmm. Japanese, uh, the JSA. You know, there's various... In, uh, international agencies that we work with fairly often that can give us, um, you know, expertise or build instruments. And They're probably also international scientists that are renting space, uh, just like they do at the Hubble, right? Uh, is there um, going to be any of that like going time on? Share kind yeah, of like a timeshare, like, can you uh, run this, this test for me while you're on Mars? Uh, sort of. This kind of data is sort of put out to the scientific community. So you can, you know, some people will get it and then after a certain amount of time, you know, maybe it's distributed. I'm mm -hmm. not quite sure about uh, the exact procedures of that. And I'm but sure if it ends up like the Spirit and Opportunity rovers where it just runs and runs and runs, they're going to end up with some free time on their hands so they could timeshare that out. That would be oh, cool. Yeah, there's going to be lots of you know experiments like we thought up. And some of our international partners can say, oh, wow, I see this piece of data. I think right. this can happen. And you can, you know, talk. You know, of course, they'll talk to each other and say, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, you know, when we, have a time, when we have the time, we'll try to do that kind of a thing. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Any other topics on this guy we should cover before we wrap this episode up? interesting little side note you can go to uh, there's a website in the in the show doc it will put it probably put it in the notes yeah. that you can lo uh, sign in your name and your zip code and your name will go on a microchip on the rover and it'll head to mars you'll go to space so is it free it yeah it's completely free you just uh type your name and zip code into the website and hit enter and it does They've done and this so kind that of thing means, before. That also means that when the rover goes and picks up its jetpack and comes home, it'll know exactly how to find it. <laughs> well, you're aiming. Okay. <laughs> That's funny. You say that as I'm submitting it too. So uh, <laughs> there you go. I'm now. I'm now going to be uh, on the Mars rover. All right. Well, I'll that's make sure awesome. I'm not here when it gets back. Yeah. Yeah. So if one night we're not here for Jupiter night, and you, and you heard about the Mars rover returning, <laughs> you know what's up, Internet. All right. Well, cool. See, now you yeah. just gave me a. Now I'm going to be. My name's going to be on Mars. Hmm. And you can do the same. I'll put the link to that in the show notes. It's totally free, so why not? There's also uh, uh, other really cool resources online. You can follow the Curiosity Rover on Twitter, <laughs> yeah. which I think might be cool. Like if you want, as we get closer to the launch window in November, you can learn more about like where they plan to land, probably. And I all just sorts can't of believe stuff. it. It's amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. We can follow the Mars Rover on Twitter. Twitter. Something else. While well, I'm watching it be built on Ustream. Yeah. After yeah. I get done watching President Obama stream on Facebook Live today. Mm. <laughs> Mine is being blown right now. The internet is too much. It's too much. Well, that's why the robots want to end us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Heather. Well, thanks for coming on and schooling us once again on all of the awesome things going on with the new uh, rovers and, and past and present. Mm? Thanks for having us. Having me. Right. Well, you bet. And of course, we'll have uh, more uh, coming up in a future episode of Jupiter Night. So if you have questions for Heather, send them in to night at jupiterbroadcasting.com and we would be happy to answer them. 
or forward them to her because she's got a bigger brain than she us. does have a bigger <laughs> yeah so that's that's true yeah i uh, know just a couple of programming notes uh tomorrow during the day at 1 p.m pacific over at jblive.tv we'll be streaming uh our new show tech snap the second episode will be airing live tomorrow and you can tune in and join us for that and then thursday night stupider night it's going to be a very fun game show edition of the show the j-man's going to be out no, I'm going to be hiding in my bunker because it's Judgment Day. Yeah, right. right. I mean, I'm, it's busy. That's in your contract. So right. That's fair. Uh, we've worked that out ahead of time. So, But otherwise, <laughs> we're going to have a fun episode, and so we'd love to have you tune in and check that out. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for watching tonight's episode of Jupiter at Night, and we'll see you tomorrow night.